Woman, won't you find your voice? Oh, oh woman, won't you find your soul? Woman, won't you find your voice? Oh, oh woman, won't you find your soul? I feel as if I've been a feminist all my life. My mother would never have called herself a feminist, but she absolutely brought us up in ways that were clearly feminist. My grandmother was probably even more feminist than my mother, you know, transgressing all kinds of rules in, within her own lifetime and really not caring what anybody thought about it. Um, I suppose that in terms of an intellectual understanding and acceptance of feminism. It probably was when I was in university and studying different types of social movements and recognizing that the choices I was making, the things that I believed in, were all part of being a feminist. But I really do think that it's something that's been there all of my life. African feminism is something that's really special. It's a blend of a political belief, an ideological mindset, uh, a way of being and believing and visioning that is about transforming power relations, but transforming power relations within our cultural, our social, our political and our economic contexts. And African feminism has always been a lot more fun than some of the other forms of, uh, other types of feminisms or other types of social change and creeds because I think that we have a lot of intersections with feminism. It's not just about changing gender relations and uh, power relations. It's also about the intersection of racism, of class, of social injustice, of economic injustice, of all lots of different types of oppression and I think that African feminism captures that almost holistic approach to social change and social justice. So for me I think African feminism is special that way and I think that some of our cultural contexts around African feminism are some of the things that make African feminism fun. The laughing, the sharing, the dancing, the singing, the, the having fun even as we struggle to make change. Feminists have contributed to transforming Africa for generations. Whether we go back as far as Queen Nzinga or Ya Santwa or any of our warrior queens, they were feminists. They may not have had the terminology, but the change they made, the stances they took, all of that was about feminism. So for generations, we've had these warrior women, and I don't mean warrior in the sense of militarism, but warrior in terms of their souls and their spirits and their determination to change social norms. So for me, feminism, African feminism has gone on for generations, and it's been part of our overturning of colonialization. We've had the amazing women, some of whom were actual military warriors who were part of liberation struggles. We've had the feminists who were part of changing social and cultural norms in the generations before we came along. And we've had feminists in the last 10, 20, 25 years who've been part of changing the legislative norms on our continent and being part of producing some amazing constitutions, some of which have the best protections for women's rights internationally. And we've had feminism that's really helped to change the way in which women are seen. We are having discussions now that we were not able to have in my grandmother's time. We are able and have been able to make violence against women a real issue. We haven't dealt with that issue, we haven't solved it, but people know and people now can't pretend, can't hide behind ignorance or saying this is about our culture or saying oh is this wrong? We've managed to get 
issues around gay and lesbian lives, around choices around sexuality, around women's choices around our own bodies and autonomy. We've managed to make this part of everyday conversation. We've got a really long way to go in terms of implementing some of the legislation, in terms of making sure that we've won hearts and minds as well as you know having changed specific pieces of legislation or specific policies or rules but i think feminism has been a major part in the transformation of africa that we've seen over generations our problem is that we're never written in the the liberation struggles happen we know of the women who died in the, in the bush. We know of the women who were called to the liberation struggle, but then they don't get written in the history. And then suddenly people are saying, oh, well, what did feminism ever do for our continent? It's done a lot and it will continue to do a lot. And it's across all areas, political change, economic change, social change, cultural change. Feminism really has to be at the forefront of equality on all fronts, whether we're talking about gay and lesbian issues, whether we're talking about economic justice, whether we're talking about cultural change, whether we're talking about people finally understanding that African women are strong people of real agency and that we have been leading this continent for generations. In all of those ways, I think we have got to be more strategic, more vocal, we have got to communicate our messages better and we have to make people listen and understand and appreciate us. In doing that, I think that we are and should be as feminists at the front of real social and economic and political transformation on our continent and that will mean designing some agendas that are our own and allying with other social movements so that we can together and collectively really leverage the change that we want to see but we have to be brave about it we have to be brave about naming the things we don't want to name we have to be brave about acknowledging where we go wrong. We have to be brave about looking at our power, acknowledging the power we have and looking at how we use it well and not doing what we have sometimes done, which is just recreating patriarchal power and then wondering why we're not breaking down systems. So it's going to take courage, but hey, African women are very brave anyway. <laughs> For me, some of the heroes are personal. You know, people like my grandmother, who was telling me from an early age not to let anybody tell me who I had to be or what I had to be. I've got amazing sisters who have done wonderful work and are transformative and supportive and loving. We've, I've got amazing colleagues that I've worked with since, you know, since leaving university really and these are women who've been in Ghana, in different parts of Africa, in the UK and in the US and then I've got all of those heroes, some of which I met, people like Wangari Matai, Grasa Michelle, Bika Dude, you know, who were just wonderful and then all of those heroes that I've never met but who were amazing in terms of growth and change and you know that's everyone from people like Intezaki Shange who showed how powerful art could be in giving African women voice and power and soul and right through to all of our wonderful musicians whether it's Mariam Makeba or Aretha Franklin and our wonderful you know, writers, whether it's Alice Walker or Maya Angelou or um, Amata Edu. I mean, there are so many. So tomorrow I'll give you a different list. <laughs> and oh, woman, find your soul. And don't let them tell you that this isn't yours Cause you are yours, your voice, your power, your soul 
Baby, don't let them tell you that this isn't yours Cause you are yours Your voice, your power, your soul Your voice, your power, your soul Your soul, your voice, your power, your soul Oh, oh, woman, won't you find your voice? Say, woman, won't you find your soul? Cause this is yours, oh, baby, you are yours. Your voice, your power, your soul. Your voice, your power, your soul.